And so everyone, uh, we have another really, really amazing speaker with us uh, today, and that is uh, Faji. Faji, hi, D teen in, turn your camera on. Yeah. Hi, hi. how are you? So good to have you with us. Thank you very much um, for being so really, excited to be there. Really, really amazing to have the most incredible speakers today with us on um, International Day of a Girl Child. How important is this day for you, Fadji? I, it's very important for me as a girl, as a girl also coming from developing country. I think that we need to change the world. We need to talk about girls, our rights, because we know that even if we have made progress, we have a lot to do today. So we need a day like this to be able to show to the girls that they can do whatever they want, they can achieve, and they have the opportunity to do it, and they have the ability also to do it. So I think days like these are very special for me because we can talk about the life of the girl and then encourage our sisters and daughters. Amazing. Fantastic. So everyone, this is Fadji, Fadji Maina, who is at NASA, is one of the data scientists at NASA, Earth data scientists, and Faji was the one who looked at all of the challenges we have proposed to you in relation to wildfires and floods. Um, and, and, and it is not by coincidence, um, you know, that we have invited Faji. Obviously, she's incredibly, incredibly influential in the space of data science, particularly being um, Nigerian in NASA as well. It's so rare. So I'm so humbled and really honored you have joined us here today. And so it's now over to you. We're here to listen to your story, uh, to be inspired. And there are lots of girls and boys and everyone else tuning in right now to specifically hear your incredible story. So it's over to you, Faji. Yes, thank you very much, Elena, and thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy today to share my story with you. I don't know if I can go ahead and share my slide in my screen because I do have some pictures for you. Yes, uh, let me um, upgrade you into co-host and then you will definitely um, be able to do that. Is it okay now? Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Can Thank you do you. that now? Fantastic. Brilliant. Over to you. Let's try to see if I can do that. Yeah. Great. So Thank you, everyone. I just like put some slides just to show you some picture of what I'm doing and like where I come from and we are going to talk a lot about it. So I'm Faji Maina and I am a love scientist at NASA Goddard in the United States of America. Today I'm going to talk about my journey from Niger, you will know the country later, to NASA. And really what I want to point out today is science can, or like your patient, it can be whatever you are passionate about, can take you to unexpected places, like something that happened to me. So where I come from, I come from Niger. Niger is different from Nigeria. It's another country. In Nigeria, they are speaking English, and Niger, we are speaking French. I was born and raised in Zander. Zander, I'm going to talk about that places. Zanda is basically a small a town in Niger, which is located a thousand kilometers away from the capital. In where the city I was born, we do not have international airport. It was a city in the middle of nowhere. In this picture, you can see the Zanda. Two pictures on the, the extreme. We do have like how the city looks like. And then the, my city is well known for water resources, scarcity. As I was a child, I was like, I grew up with people really looking for water every day. You can just picture like a society where every day when you wake up, you do not have water. We do not have tap in our home. We need to go out and girls especially have to go out to look for water and to back, come back home to be able to take shower, to be able to cook cooking and all those stuff. So as a girl, as, as a child in Zander, I was asking to myself, what can I do to my community? What can I do to my society? And when you think about the question and like where we came from, for me, it's evident. I need to study water because water is a big problem in my society and in my town. 
But also I love studies. I really love study when I was uh, I was a child. I really love, I'm very I was a very curious child. I would just go and ask a lot of questions about like what's happening in the night nature in our environment. How is it? How is that? And at the same time, I need that I know that we need water and I want to improve the lives of many people in my country. So for me it's obvious that I need to do more studies. From Zender, Niger, my country in West Africa, I went to Morocco. This is a picture of my university in Morocco. And then I have to study of sciences. Where do I left my country? Because I have to. As I mentioned, in my city, we do not have international airport. And back in the days when I was finishing high school, we do not even have university in my town. So basically, if you need to go to do some studies, you need to leave the country. And I got my, I finished high school at the age of 16. So basically as a child at 16, my parents had to choose between leaving me in the town because I was a small child. I'm not going to go to the university or let me go to university. Finally, my parents for sure selected to let me go to university at 16. And having in mind that I need to study water, at university, I say that water is just a small part of our earth. So we need, I need, need to understand that earth. That's why when I was in Morocco, I studied earth sciences in my bachelor. But then when you finish your bachelor, still you need, you think about all the solution that you need to provide. Now I understand the earth. I need to really go into that water and to understand what that water needs and how can I do that. From Morocco, I moved to France. All my studies in Morocco and in France, I was, I was very, very fortunate to have scholarship. So my parents actually did not pay school for me. I was applying for scholarship. I was like really looking for all the opportunities that I can have to be able to educate myself and also get, have it in mind that I have to because I need to uh, help my community. What I did, I went from Morocco when I finished my bachelor, I went to France to do my master. And there, that's where I really tried to look at technology. And that was that where I found that actually we can use technology to be able to tackle water resources issues. That's what I did when I was in my in France. So basically, what am I doing? I'm using high performance computing systems or all these big machines that we do have in, in, in here today to be able to simulate the water cycle. The water cycle is that picture that we do have here. Basically, you have the water cycle that we learned back in the days. We have precipitation coming and then water is going to flow in the river, in the underground, and then transpiration. So we are using all these technology and all these mathematical model and machine learning stuff. And here actually one of the computer that I, I, I was using uh, in California. And this one is one of the top five computer in the world back in the days. And we combine this computer and this technology with satellite data to be able really to understand the water cycle across many countries and continents. So I got my PhD at the age of 25 years old. I'm, as I say, I, I'm coming from Niger and the literacy rate of Niger is 19%. And actually even today in 2020, 76% of Nigerian girls are married before the age of 18, which means that more, only 20% of the Nigerian girls can actually go to university and do bachelor. And if we go to PhD basically, it's really allowed to be able to find a Nigerian girl with a PhD. So I was able to do it at the age of 25. I received a lot of interview back in the day that was in 2016, magazine cover in my country saying, hey, this girl, she can do it. She got her PhD at the age of 25 and she's from Niger. So really when we educate our girls, when we give our girls some power, they can really go to achieve something great. And actually also in 2016, I met the first lady of Niger, which she was very sportive and she told me that that's great and we need to empower girls to do that. But that didn't stop me. Basically, it gave me 
the, the courage that I needed to be able to pursue my career and to really to pursue my God. Because sometimes when you find yourself in an environment that you are alone, basically, I can feel that I was alone in that environment. I'm that Nigerian girl. I don't want no Nigerian scientists around myself, or also many, maybe African scientists or black scientists. But if you have in your back all your society and your country that is supporting you, you can just give more keep moving forward. And also, by the way, my PhD was deemed exceptional by the jury. And I got the award that is called Kepler Award. Kepler Award is basically it's a, um, um, the most uh, um, done, well done PhD in, at the University of Strasbourg. That's a picture of my PhD defense back in France in 2016. So one thing that I learned also, science does not have boundaries. I can go all over around the world to be able to understand what's happening around the world in different countries. And by the way, I can get to know also other people around the country to be able to see like how the culture is changing, like what other people are doing. That only can um, improve my, my way of understanding stuff. So after finishing my PhD in France, I moved to Italy. When I studied, I, I worked at Politecnico di, di Milan. And Italy is a new country. It's also a new language because I have to go from France basically to Italian. That's also something that I learned throughout my story is you don't have to like keep talking in one language. You just have to go to the world, speak all the languages that you can do, learn because you can do it. And you're, if you are young, you are eager, you can go and do whatever you want to do today. So I learned it to speak Italian past my French and also Hausa, which is the language of, of Niger. And I stay one year in Italy, and then I really studied water resources in Italy. After Italy, I'm someone that would love to travel and then to discover the world. And really, as I said also before, I really took opportunities. Whatever happened to me, I'm um, just go ahead and like I will always keep looking at opportunities. What can I do? How can I do that? Okay, how can I improve what I have today? because we need to keep in mind that basically what we do have today, it's not like the end. The knowledge is infinite. Everything is infinite. We can always go up until, I don't know. So from Italy, I moved to the United States of America. I got a job in Berkeley, California. And there, I think it was like really using cutting edge technologies because if you think about artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, all this technology. We have California in mind. We have Silicon Valley in our mind. So I was like, okay, I was using this technology to address one choice, this was his issue. And basically I know that in California and the United States have top supercomputer I can work with, and they have also interesting problem. If you think about climate change, basically California is one of the states that it's happening. It's just like in the future, they are like way more. We have wildfires, we have water resources problem. So it's like all these kind of problems at the same time, they have the technology to do it. So I was very excited to come to California to be able to use that technology to address a very important question like water resources problem in the era of climate change. And in California, I work to understand how wildfires affect water resources in California. And, and in the, that I put one of the new press releases from my paper. I, start, I published a paper about how wildfires are changing the environment in California. And that paper basically got really, got really viral because everyone was interested in that. But it doesn't stop here. And we need to also one thing that I throughout my journey I, I keep I keep in my mind is I need to give back to my society, like the society that that educates me, my country, Niger. So whenever I have like um, opportunity or I have to go back home, even like for holidays, for vacation, for whatever I can, I try to talk to girls, I, especially girls, because we have a lot of problems with, as we know, that girls are not in technology, girls are not in science, girls are not doing mathematics, but we really need to change this because we know that we need girls today to be able to change the world. So yeah, I, whenever I go back to home, I try to talk to girls, I try to motivate them and to encourage them to do science. 
And also, also in California, that's something that I'm really passionate about is able to motivate girls also. So I, whenever I have time, like on weekends or like after work, I try to go to talk to girls in high school, girls in middle school, like whatever like age of them, just trying to show them that basically that world is full of problems, we know that. But really, we need science to do it. And science can't only be done by men. We need women there, and we need you guys. So that's my, my one of the patients that I, I developed. The other thing that I love to do is to share my science. Because, you know, whenever you use that technology, whenever you develop a methodology, whenever you develop an app, we, you need to show to people that you have done it. And this is you that have done it. As a girl also, because we need to speak up, we need to show to the world that we are actually doing it and we can do it. So we need to go and show to the world what we have done. That's something I think it's really important today. So we need to change that narrative. When we think about the auto science, about technology, about AI today, people are gonna say, men and usually white men but if we stay behind and we didn't step out to say that we are doing this no one is going to know that so it's really important to you to go and share your science share what you are doing and share what you have fun that's something important and also I had some high level discussion throughout my career. I will meet the president of National Academy of Science of the United States, some senator and some congressmen. I think that is really important also because we are developing, we are using science basically to be able to tackle some issues that are really important. Then our findings need to be used to make decisions at the high level of our society, because we know that politicians are going to make that decision and that, that, that decision is going to change our lives. So it's really important to be able to share our science also with that, these people, to be able to make decisions, to be able to make policy and stuff. So even if like today, in one of your challenges was about climate change and developing a methodology, for wildfires or like how to track floods. If you develop this, it's really important at some point to talk to uh, people in the government and stuff to be able to show them that you have done it and you are a girl, you have done it, then they need to use it to be able to make decisions, basically. So I have received also a lot of uh, awards during my, uh, my postdoctoral research in the United States. One of them was the MIT Lavin Sun, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is like one of the highest universities in the world in terms of technology and science. And they recognized me as a rising star in civil and environmental engineering. That's the figure on the left. Then I was on the, I was included in the Forbes 30 and 30 in the United States. And basically the magazine Forbes is uh, highlighting 30, people that are under 30 and are doing great in science. That's something that I got also in 2019. And as a girl coming from Niger, again, Niger is the last country in the world. We do not have science. Actually, it was something science, I really discovered science when I was curious, but I didn't know that my curiosity basically is doing science. I didn't know how to, do, to use it. The first time that I actually used a computer was when I was 16, 17 at university. So, and then I discovered that computer and then I was able to use that computer and other technology to address some key issues. So, but these awards, they really keep me moving forward. As I said before, I do not stop like there and say that I got it. We need to think about that this world, we need to do more in that world. We need to go to keep moving forward. We need to change also the narrative of, of girls and women in general, and we need to do use science. We have a lot of problems in that world that we need, we need to take care. So I really, I'm really pushing forward stuff, really trying to work hard. And science is something that is my passion using computer. I can work like open my computer in airports to be able to do stuff. I can work like in coffee or like on holidays. It's really something that is in, in, in that's my passion. And so because that passion really comes from the fact that I wanted to address some key issues in my society. So if you're doing something because you want really to change something and you really want to do it, I think that you can put all the energy that you do have to be able to achieve your goal. And then I made it to NASA. 
uh, I got a job offer from NASA was uh, actually six months ago. And I was very really surprised because, you know, NASA is something that I have seen in movie, but back in my home in Niger. And going up from Niger, actually, I didn't know that I was able to visit one day the United States of America. It was something like the big country. And actually, I, the first time that I traveled outside my country is when I got my uh, finished high school, I was going to university. It was the first time that actually I took an airplane. And then that happened like at 16, that girl coming from Zende, going up, I was like just doing my to myself, maybe I'll go to do the bachelor. I really didn't think that one day I'll make it to, to NASA. Here I have some picture when I was like um, in my, when I was doing my middle school in Niger, and then two pictures when I, I made it to NASA. And I became the first Nigerian to work for NASA. As I said, Nigeria is the last country in the world. And today I'm very proud of it because the first Nigerian that made it to NASA is actually a woman. It showed to many big girls that it doesn't mean that science is for men or women cannot do stuff. You can be the first one to do it as a woman, not as a man, which is something possible. And I think that's really thing that the next generation can do it. We can change our narratives and girls can do it. So, and the president of Niger actually called me to congratulate me because the president of Niger is someone that really cares about science and think that we need to use technology to be able to solve many issues that we have in Niger. Something like education, something like health, something like climate change, that all these problems is the problem that are affecting our country. And today we know that we need that technology to be able to solve these problems. So he called to congratulate me and then to, to say also to other girls in Niger that they too can do it. They too today can think that they can become a scientist at NASA, one of the big research institutions in the world, and they can achieve it. That was something that also made me proud. And today I'm more, very eager also to like really push girls because you don't have to be the only one today, even if today I'm the only one Nigerian at NASA, or like the only one Nigerian woman doing this stuff. I think that we need to change the narrative. We need all these women to come together and to help and to change that narrative as something I am. So to wrap up what I have done, from Niger actually, I was able to travel the world and to use only my technology, uh, by technology, I just mathematical model and high performance computing system to address water resources issues. My first goal was to help my country because I was seeing water resources issue in my hometown. By then, I came to understand that water resources issues are in every part of the world. Wherever you are in the world, you can have a water related problem. In my country, it can be water scarcity. In many other countries like Asia, it can be floods. In other countries, it can be water resources pollution. And we need water, basically. 70% of our body is made of water. We need water to be able to live. We need water every day, and water is a part of our daily lives. Then I really explored today at the age of 29. I have come to explore water resources issues across countries and continents. Like in France, I studied groundwater pollution. Our Italy, I use model and technology to be able to understand ecosystem preservation and water resources issue related to ecosystem. In the United States, um, in California, I use water, I use technology to be able to understand the impact of climate extremes and wildfires on water resources. I also study in Colorado which is like mountainous region in the United States to be able to see what's the water problem there, again, using, using technology. I also, of course, study water resources issue, how climate change is affecting our community in Africa and in the Sahel region in general. And also I study water resources in Africa. So I've come to, to work across continent and countries as a girl coming from Niger using technology and also my Driving, but I would buy my eagerness to solve problems and to my task for knowledge. So, and I will continue to do so, as I said, it's just like the beginning. I feel like when I see that map of the world, I feel like there are a lot of countries that I need to fill in. And also, technology is something that is changing very fast, you know. 
the machine learning approach that we are using today is going to change the next next day or like next week or next year. So everything is moving fast, and we need to move fast about it. Uh, with it and also climate change is happening like very fast and we need to adapt, we need to provide solution. This is not going to stop today. That's why also I say that we need girls, we need you guys to go to come with to us and to use all that technology to be able to solve all these issues. And something that I wanna highlight really today, I caught that I love is one life gives you lemon like lemonade. Basically I have come to work at NASA, I have come to be Forbes under 30, under 30, but I didn't have all the skills. And all, I didn't have like the profile that sees, like when you think about a scientist working at NASA or someone who is in the Forbes under 30, under 30, you can think about someone who went to that, all these big universities or someone coming from like a big country, but I came from Niger. And actually, I never went to like all these big university, but really, I really, use whatever life gives me to be able to show my best. And that's what makes me what I am today. So when, even if you do not have today, you feel that you have a lot of something that yeah, you are missing in your life, you can really use whatever you have today, make the best of it, and you can go further with that. You don't need to be on the top. Basically, if you're on the top, so why are you going to do, go up? So really, you can, you might not have like all the opportunity. You might not have like all the things that you think about to be able to succeed, but you can use whatever you have today and just do something with that and dream big. Really, you have to think about like the big picture, as American used to say, you need to think about the big picture. Even if you are in your small house today in your country, just think about the big picture and say that you may achieve it someday. You might not have achieved it in, in one or two years, but really you can do it like in many years. And believe in your dreams, that, that's the key things. When you dream big, you need to believe in your dreams and be able to say that every day I will take a step to be close to that dream and to achieve it. So I think that's all that I have today. And another thing that I want to highlight, I really want you girls as the future generation and the next generation, we live in a climate change era. Climate change is happening. And as a someone that is using data to be able to understand climate change. What I'm seeing from my models is really making me some sad sometimes because I can see the future in my models. I know what's going to happen. And then sometimes I feel sad about this next generation. I say that, what are we going to leave them? But then what makes me happy is we have technology today and we have all the tools that we need to change that. So really use the other tools to change that and to address the issues that we have in the world. So I think that's all that I have today. I will be happy to take all your questions and stuff. Yeah. That is amazing, Faji. I am just so happy that you have joined us today. And what an incredible story. Uh, I have never heard a story like this. Um, and this is just so inspiring to hear um, a story from, from you as well. You know, a little girl um, in a tiny place in Niger, dreaming from a really young age to change the world and look at you now this is incredible mm -hmm. i want every single girl out there listening watching uh, this stream to really start believing in her abilities to change the world yeah, because exactly. if Haji was able to do this from where she comes from, you know, everything is possible. And I've always said this all along. And even the story with me, I come from a tiny town in Uzbekistan called Bukhara. Faji, you will know this as an earth, not yeah. a big time, where this is. We're a double landlocked country. I have never even seen water until I was about 20. So wow. I always tell my story as well when I was a tiny girl you know teenager and my mom told me 
learn to speak English and this will be, you know, this will open up the world to you. The world will be your oyster. And I listened to my mom's advice. Uh, the only child out of three of us uh, decided that I wanted to learn English. And that really opened so many doors to me. But Faji, your story is just um, incredible. So we have got uh, quite a number of questions, obviously, for you. And, uh, and the first one um, is, uh, how important is diversity in technology? I think it's very, I can say that diversity is a key to developing technology today. Because we need diversity, as that word becomes just a global village, where everything that's happening today is not just one side of the world, it's happening around across the world. And we need a lot of people thinking differently, you know, we cannot like just move someone thinking, like if we take people from just one, one kind of ethnicity or one kind of uh, background, thinking about one problem, they just have only one way of thinking. But today we need to explore a lot of ways of thinking. And for me also, I have not come to know it because as I travel from Africa to Europe, also to United States, I can see that things are changing across countries and continents. People are not thinking in the same way, but we need all these kind of different thinkings. And that's why today, I think it's very, very important to have diversity in technology and it's the, like the key to developing technology today. Brilliant. And uh, what advice would you offer to a young girl in this hackathon um, who is one day interested um, in becoming a data scientist or embrace her career in AI? Do you have any, um, any tips and advice, perhaps your top three advice to a girl like this who is an aspiring data scientist? I think I can say that you need to believe in your dream, whatever you want to do today. I can also share again my story. As I said, I didn't have a computer when I was in high school. When I was your age, I didn't have a computer, actually. I didn't even know how to code. Like, well, basically, at some point in my life, all when I was in Morocco, we do not have a lot of computers to be able to code every day. But when I realized that I need to be able to learn for time, to speak all these languages that I can have today, I just put myself in. I just keep going, adding my additional time. Like when I finish high school, I will finish my school at six. I can go out again to have additional hour and be able to do it. And to girls, it might not be easy because in this era, like most of the people are men. So you can, you can have a lot of problems, but believe in yourself if you think that you are going there, it's not only about you, but it's also all the generation of all the girls that are watching you, that are, are gonna be inspired by you. Just be that you belong there. You belong there and you need to go to move forward. So just keep, and data science today is very good stuff because I love internet today because whenever I have a problem, I, myself, I just go to Google it and to be part also of of a community. There are a lot of community out there. People have been developing a lot of things. I think if you want to do that data science, you need to be part of that community because something that you want to do, maybe someone has already done it. So we really need to talk to people. Great, great. And um, we do have some other questions. Uh, how would you inspire more, more girls of color to pursue STEM careers, particularly from countries where they are actively discouraged from doing so? Yeah. So what I, will, I, has been, I have been doing at like the next second thing, they have been discouraged of doing so. I think in my country, it's the case in Niger. Basically, if a girl wants to do like mathematics, computer science, everybody's going to tell her, you know, that's not for you. But who says that? No, we can, we, I'm here, I'm doing it. I'm a woman of color, I come from Niger, I'm doing it. So you too can do it. So I was talking to the parents directly or to the, these adults people, taking the, they saying to them that we need to stop saying to girls that they cannot do it. Because if you say to a girl that she can do it, she will do it. It's basically the same for men. That's what people have been doing for men. People have been saying to men that you can do it because you are men, you are smart. Even if the man is not smart, he's going to think that he's smart, actually, that he can do it. So we need to do the same for girls. It doesn't mean that they cannot do it. And also, like, it's very important today, 
as a scientist, as, as a data scientist, as a woman of color, as a black woman today, I feel that I need to show myself and to talk just to be able to show the, to the other girl that I'm doing it. It's very important to have a representation. When I was a, a girl, I didn't see a scientist, a woman scientist that is black or African. Frankly, I didn't know, but I just believe in my imagination that it could exist, but we really need to be able to say that we are here, we are doing it. So we, need, we can also do it. It's very important, representation matters today. And even if like you yourself, whenever you achieve, even if you are today 16, you're a teenager, think about like the girl, the young girl that's just like coming or like going to the kindergarten. She can look up to you and you can be your role model. So we really need role model. We need to talk about it openly to show to people we can do it. We are here also to do it. Fantastic. Uh, we have a question from a teenage girl here. What advice do you have to girls experiencing discrimination or mean comments from people in school and work? I think one thing is to talk about it. Just not, do not stay like if an environment is toxic for you, you are not going to, it's going to be difficult for you to succeed. Talk about someone who is adult, who can really understand you. That's a very big problem. And I think that we should talk about it. We can, you should speak up. We can, if you cannot do it, you can ask your friend or your, your parents also can help you to address that issue. And also to your end, what I used to do for myself, I really, even if like the problem is kind of sorted out, I want to go back to show to the people that they were wrong. Basically, sometimes I just give myself something that someone is just think I cannot do it. I will just like give hundred or thousand percent of myself to do the work and to show to the world that I can do it. So you were wrong, what you are thinking. But yeah, talk to your parent, talk to an adult, talk to someone in your school or university about what's happening because this can be like a big problem. Definitely, absolutely. Um, and I really love the fact that you just mentioned that when somebody says no to you, um, you just go and prove them wrong. So how many yeah. times, Fudgy, have you had somebody say no to you? Yeah, I have, a, I have had, you know, when some, some people like when you are the first person to do something, like even like yeah. someone in your entourage can really think that you cannot do it. So sometimes I really have to go and I can add it on my additional time, like on weekend, and can really work on that things and then just come back to be able to show to that person, you know, you were wrong. Because, you know, people have a lot of biases in their minds. Sometimes they, are, they have like no, like no proof for that. It's it just in their mind that they think that we cannot do it because you can be young. I have a lot of issues like throughout my career. I was young, I was always the youngest. Person. I was black, I was from Africa. And sometimes I also like in an English speaking country, I used to speak French. So people can really add all these kind of biases on you and then feel like you cannot do it. But really sometimes I really want to change the narratives so I'm going to do the work and then come to say, hey, you know, I have done it. So it just means that I can do it. And the people usually can change on their minds. And also in all these steps, think about not only, it's not only about yourself, it's all the people that are, are going to come and also all your environment, people who looks like you and stuff. So it's not about you, but it's about like an entire community. That's brilliant. Uh, that is exactly what we need. You know, girls standing in their power and showing mm -hmm. to everyone that they can do everything they have set their minds to do. So. Exactly. Yeah, brilliant. So, Faji, you will be really pleased to hear that we have at least four or five teams out of 23 teams in our hackathon who are tackling climate change. And so, which I'm really excited about as well. And so we have a, a question from one of the teams. How can students raise awareness uh, for climate change? Obviously we have some great examples already, some amazing role models, Greta Thunberg is one of them. But mm -hmm. these teenagers in the hackathon are trying to design something using AI 
to encourage many other teenagers across the globe to really take action and show them what might happen if action is not taken now. Mm -hmm. What can they do to raise that awareness? I think uh, talking social media is a big thing today. So all, and if you think about teenagers across all the world, that's something that they have in common. Many teenagers can be from like someone from Niger or someone from like France or United States that are using social media. And you can do, you can, you as a teenager, you develop it so you can adapt to the language of teenager. Of like, how can you, are you going to explain to someone who is like, you might be, they are not like very interested in climate change, but find a way that's going to convince that person. Like an example that I can, that I can give is like, if someone loves music, you can make it like sounds about climate change. So you can like push the person to listen to that music. And then when listening to music, the music, the person is going to, to understand something. It's really adapting, like knowing what the person loves to do. And then you can just tackle it to insert climate change. In, in, the, in the start. That's basically something that I'm doing with my people in my country, because I know that like usually like talking to them as like speech, no one, nobody's going to listen to you. So you really need to kind of find a way that they love to like enjoy, or it can be like a movie, it can be like to have jobs or stuff. And then I try to have the way of communicating and then I, do, I say what I want to say to them. And then you can use social media. For so, so social media is the big platform that we can use today. And even if like some people might think that we have a lot of like people speak, talking about climate change on, on social media, I don't think that it's not compared to other problem or compared to something that will become viral, but it's not critical for us. Brilliant. So thank you so much, uh, Faji, for joining us. And uh, this has been an incredibly uh, exciting exchange. And it was such an honor to host you here today with us on International Day of a Girl Child. So I couldn't have thought of a better you know, guest uh, to have with us today. So you and Rene and Dilek have really made my, my day, my, my evening rather, because it's already getting late here in London. Um, but I'm really grateful you have joined us. Uh, we will be emailing you with many more questions because there are many more pouring. Yeah. So you could respond to us. Um, yeah. And, and really, you are such a role model and such an inspiration. And we want to see you again. We will definitely invite you to our podcast because we have got teenagers who listen to that podcast. And if you are not uh, subscribed, so please do find us on iTunes um, and Spotify because we will definitely invite Fadji again uh, for the podcast as well because it's so important uh, to have all of these questions answered by incredible people like Faji. You are such an inspiration to everyone, to every single girl out there, whether she's from Niger or any other part of the world. And we are so grateful you have honored us with your presence today on um, International Day of a Girl Child. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for inviting me. That was very good. And thank you. I'm looking forward to staying in touch with you and also to answer to other questions that the teenagers are going to have. I'm here for you. And I really want you to, to go and do it. I don't want it to be alone. I don't want to be just like two or three people doing it. I want all of you from all over the world to come here to use technology to address all the problems that we have in this world. Thank you. Indeed, and we do have many, many problems. And even right now in times of COVID, you know, yeah. as the world is recovering from COVID, there are many, many more problems to solve. And we need diversity in tech and many more girls to join uh, Fudgy on her journey as well. So yeah. thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. We've heard from three most inspiring speakers and tomorrow we will be back here at five o'clock join us to hear from other incredible incredibly inspiring speakers and we will be doing this every week to celebrate international day of a girl child and ada lovelace day so see you back here tomorrow and thank you so much for joining us on this incredible journey so to all teenagers out there uh, keep solving incredible problems using data science and AI. I will be back in Discord to see and check in with every single team. And I'm so excited about everything you're doing right now. So you're very fortunate, very lucky. You have this incredible opportunity. 
and incredible people like Faji to inspire you on your journeys. Thank you so much again, Faji. We will be seeing you uh, soon and I will be back in Discord shortly. So we're ending our stream right now and have a great evening or night, everyone. Thank you.